what you see here is a pencil. And it's one of the things I hate the most in the world. I have no idea, but simply because back when we were primary school teachers preferred to use it as a torturing device. As if you're, if you didn't write your lesson, you get one of those, stick between your, your big fingers, and it'll squeeze them together, giving you a great amount of pain. I don't know, but I know since that time, even though writing is one of my favorite hobbies, I've never enjoyed writing with one of those ever again. <laughs> so today, I wish to talk about perception. Perception, to me, the way we see the world around us depends on how we really view it, not for what it truly is. And the fact that we view the world differently is called perception scientifically. And perception develops and changes throughout time. When we grow up, we have many variables, many variables that changes our perception, like culture, language, and even age sometimes makes its impact on our perception. As a student at the university, and on the brink of our adult lives, we, we are faced with some difficult questions, such as, how do we define our happiness? And what is our perspective of life after college? All of those stuff, we are really confused, not in the sense of how do we identify them, but of our perception towards those things. The true, the true nature of those things that makes us confused. Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud is one of my favorite pioneer clerics in Islamic psychology, he says our perception is limited to that which we believe is practically impossible. So there's a psychology behind our perception. And reality is its main reference. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My parents migrated from Mauritania, Islamic Republic Mauritania, basically. Growing up outside gave me an insight of how society could alter, could basically shapes our entire vision, our entire vision of life and really dictates how we see things around us. When, we, when society changes our perception, we tend to see this perception as everything true, as an unshakable truth. For example, in the United Arab Emirates, where I spent some of my years in time, uh, we used to be sent to school as early as 6 a.m. We used to line up in lines like that, just to cheer up for the national anthem, which is something I've never understood the importance of. I know this is one of the things that encourage patriot, uh, patriotism and stuff like that, but I've never really understood how could that really become a social norm. After that, after that, we were taught in school so many different stuff. We were taught about history of our forefathers. We were taught about how women basically have half brain. Even though that the number of girls in education are double that of the boys. If not, if not more than that. Really perception could, could be dazzlingly magnificent and shapes everything we think about it. Everything we see in the world around us is entirely depending on our perception. This is Alia Crum, a clinical psychologist from the United States. She, she made an interesting experiment. She basically says in her experiment that the, thing, the label we create for things, we automatically react to those labels which we created subconsciously without we knowing about them. She made an interesting experiment. The subject matter of the experiment was a milkshake. Two bottle mix, milkshake. She made sure that each one of those two bottles, 300 calories each. And as people coming from outside, she tested their hormones. The hormones are responsible for hunger and thirst. The labels that she they put on those milkshake, one of those was indulgence shake, remove your thirst. Another one was sensory shake, fat free, something that totally healthy. Surprisingly, people who drank from indulgence shake responded to that as if they drank three times more. This is basically translates, approves how what you label something your body or your brain tricks you into believing that it's completely true. Doesn't mean, really mean it's true. It does, your, your brain tricks you that to believe that. The label that you created to something is, is true. Like, think about people around you in the university. There are people whose only concept of being in the university, they just, they just want to graduate. They, there's no concept of learning because you're going to forget everything. There are those people. And there are also people who have book homes, like complete book homes, who understand nothing. They have no social in life. I mean, they, have, they understand everything about studying, but they, are like, they have no concept of social life. There are also the clubbers that are everywhere. They don't, give a, they don't give a damn about the world. 
but that theoretically all of those people are students. But they have the rigid perception of how things should be, how life is all about. And guess what? All this rigid perception begs rigid reactions. It's relatively hard to talk to people out of that bubble they surround themselves with. Because of that bubble, you'll have to understand that nothing stays the same anymore. Everything changes. So based on that, you need to alter your thinking in a way that whatever you see, you have to understand that it's not completely true until you know exactly what is it about. This is, this is, looks like Abraham Maslow, but it's not, it's for perception. The basic necessity of the perception is what we think. And what we pr proves to say that what we say something is all about, that becomes the next level, is what we do about it, what we react to it. And that's exactly the description of our perception. That what this triangle misses here is that the, the actual thing, the actual goal, of perception is that we, as human beings, we perceive that thing according to what we think of ourselves, not to what the actual nature of that stuff. This subject took me a lot of interest because I'm one of those people who observe a lot more than I speak. So I do listen to people, especially when, I, when we are like in a personal chit chats, we do bring that stuff up. And you tend to understand that people doesn't really accept criticism but they criticize and the fact that they don't accept criticism is by itself the trouble is they just think of the story of Artisto with the fool he says the only problem with the fool I had no problem with the fool the only problem with the fool is that always thinks himself right he thinks his path is always always straight which is by itself wrong you have no issue with what you're thinking there's no issue of where you're coming from no issue of what your culture perspective says so but the issue is that you always think that you're right. That's by itself is a trouble. The whole debate in the Arab world over the past five years was about the sources of terrorism and what drives big numbers of Muslim youth across the world to die in battles which, have the, which they know nothing about. The consequences of that was like, there is a big wave of Islamophobia in the West and many other countries that they are afraid of what Muslim label others to be. People have the right to judge whatever they want to judge. It's the actual nature of people. They will always judge. But the thing is, what's your reaction to this judgment? Islamophobia and terrorism are just phenomenal. And what we think of them translates into what we react to them. I can tell you from, as a, uh, from the heart, as a Muslim, as a Muslim youth, it's not, it's the issue here with, this, with the issue here with terrorism is not so much of our religious discourse. It's not so much of our political corruption. It's our understanding of the concept of freedom of expression. The concept of freedom of expression is an abused concept. I'm one of its biggest supporters. I believe that across the world, there are places where freedom of expression is not entirely given. There are places where there is an incomplete practice of freedom of expression. But the issue is, if you didn't give a space or a, a place for a place for understanding, place for youth to speak up, such as this one. They won't have that prejudice towards their own self, towards their own mindset. I believe the more, as human beings, the more we open a space for each other, the more we understand each other, the more we engage and converse and mingle with one another, we will understand one another. Cultural perspectives do matter a lot. Back, uh, back in the Arab countries, for example, it's okay to converse and mingle with people from your community. Strangers even. But here in Malaysia, if you do that, that's insane. Really. And like notice if you notice inside the class, there are people there are people like maybe internationals, maybe locals, who do ask a lot of questions to lecturers. That's culturally impolite in Malaysia. But back in the Arab countries, that's commendable actually. And if you don't ask a lot, one way or another, you're bad students. This shows a very valid question, how much social norms have power over our perception. If you and I hang our happiness outside, leave it to the labels of people, then we're all, we, will, we will wait far so long for us to seize our happiness. If we didn't embrace, embrace our own self, if we didn't embrace our identity, our objection before our approval, our understanding before our misunderstandings. That sense of freedom of prejudices will always be a dream.
Because things might seem different from the outside, yet it isn't really different. It's your perception that makes itself. So.